Greetings from Gaza, from the WHO office in Derbala, which is also the Polio Emergency Operations Center, where <clears throat> all partners actually come together, do the planning, but now everyone is actually in the in the field. So let's let's go back. Why why are we here? So we need to vaccinate 640,000 children all over Gaza. Yeah, we do this, and we. Uh, this campaign is there's actually two campaigns. We are we started now the first round, and the second round will be in four weeks' time. We need to cover minimum of 90% of those children to stop the transmission within Gaza and to avoid uh, no, polio spread, international spread to polio to surrounding uh, to surrounding countries. Uh, this is the third day of the campaign. So the the first three days, and, and most likely plus one, we focused on the so-called central zone. And, and let me give you some data. So yesterday, the second day, 74,346 children were vaccinated. That's the second day of the polio campaign. The first day, 86,683 children were vaccinated. So the total number of the first two days, children under 10, reached 161,030 uh, children. That actually surpassed the target we set. We targeted this. We had an estimate there would be like 156,500 ch uh, 500 children in this central zones. Uh, and, and Rick, sorry, I'm, I'm looking at the face of the journalist here. Can you please repeat the figures? Sorry? Uh, can you please repeat the figures slowly? They have yes. not had the time to write it down. Okay, so maybe then to start again. So the overall target, 640,000 children all over Gaza. Two rounds of polio. Uh, we started now the first round, the next round of four weeks. We have three zones. We started in the central zones, with a, which had a target of 156,500 children. So yesterday, 74,346 children were vaccinated. And the first day, 86,683 children were vaccinated. So which brings it on already on the total number of children under 10, which were reached over the first two days of one 61,030 children. So actually, we surpassed the estimated target. So our target for the central zone was an underestimation. And most likely, uh, due to the, uh, the constant population movement, due to the uh, specifically the multiple evacuation orders we've seen over the last, uh, over the last uh, weeks. So day three of the campaign is currently ongoing to make sure that, that, that any most of the children left, etc., that they will be reached as well, and and no children is me is missed. So in this operation, and it's incredibly complex. There's 513 teams, mainly operating from a fixed site, multiple fixed sites, uh, and and the fixed sites even have splits. They can also function as mobile mobile teams. So we have mainly fixed sites, many mobile teams, social mobilizers, etc., all around. Then there is also an, an, um, an intra-monitoring campaign. I will get back to that uh, later. So from day one, I visited uh, many of the fixed sites and also it shows the partnership which is ongoing. The fixed sites, they were from the Ministry of Health, from UNRWA, from NGOs, UK Meds, International Medical Corps, MSF, etc. I mean, like it's a, this whole campaign is together with Ministry of Health, WHO, UNICEF, UNRWA, but I would say many, many NGOs. We talk about 2,200 health workers, um, community uh, co uh, community organized uh, volunteers, and uh, community workers as well. Now, we also have some coordinated missions that in Central Zone to reach actually the, really the areas uh, close by, the, the areas which was just outside this, uh, this area where we had this uh, uh, humanitarian pause. And we do that with, with fixed teams and vaccination teams as well, which works relatively uh, well. What I also noticed uh, is the spirit. In the first two days, 
and, and so the, fir the first day I went to many of these uh, health centers, primary health care centers, and it was almost a little bit, I wouldn't say festive mood, but it was like uh, there were so many the fathers, mothers bringing their children in and children really proud and happy that they got vaccinated. And, and, and there was a sense of kind of uh, a relief. I was personally not even so surprised about this. Uh, Gaza has, an, just like the West Bank, has a very high vaccination acceptance. And, and before this crisis, routine immunization had coverages of 90 to 95 percent, which is actually much better than a lot of high income countries have. So there is a huge, uh, yeah, there is a huge acceptance rate. The communication done uh, well, well as well. And what we got back from the, the independent, we have independent monitoring teams who also go out outside and, and talk to the population, interview the teams, etc. And overall, of course, there's always hiccups. Somewhere there's some delays, somewhere there's something else. But overall, really, uh, really good work. Again, this is just uh, the second, the third day of this campaign. We think that we will need another day tomorrow to actually wrap up the central zone completely. And then we will shift to the to the south, the southern zone on, on uh, Thursday and a similar approach, three intense days and most likely the south, the southern zone is a bigger area, most likely with an, uh, an, another day. After that, we shift to the northern zone. Four weeks later, we repeat this, uh, this process. I want to also say the environment because First of all, we need, of course, the, the, the critical is, is this area specific humanitarian pauses. We welcome that, uh, that very much. And, 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 and we expect that all parties will stick to that. It's absolutely critical. Because this is why parents bring their children and children can go out. But also this 2,200 health workers can move, all these mobile, mobile teams can go out. The monitoring uh, teams can go out, etc., etc. And I want to still describe, because we are now almost a little bit in this polio bubble, although it's only the third day. Uh, but this is an environment where we are extremely concerned about uh, health and health situation. We, we, we still talk about, if you look at health functionality, you talk about 16 of the 36 hospitals which are operational. We're talking about 50 of the 150 primary health care. Uh, centers which are partly uh, functional we have seen a an, an, an huge increase in infectious diseases and, and over over of course this crisis we've seen more than a million uh, mainly children uh, diagnosed with acute respiratory infection more than 600,000 children uh, with diarrhea this is 25 times fold increase over that time we see over one in the 10,000 one in the five to one in 10,000 uh, acute jaundice syndrome and it's all syndromic case managed hepatitis a many skin diseases and this of course is all linked to the very poor uh, water and sanitary condition incredibly poor water and sanitary conditions uh, which is again coming back to polio it's not only a breeding ground for many of the infectious diseases we're dealing with, but also uh, with, with, with many of the, of course, also with polio. And when I was yesterday, I went with a couple of mobile teams and we walked around for, for an hour or so around this endless, and you've seen this along the, the coastal road, this endless makeshift camps everywhere. And we went all over the place and everywhere we talked to, to the parents, to the children, etc. And good thing was that really, literally, almost all those kids were vaccinated. And actually, really proud of that. And even small kids bringing us, oh, I know a place where still two, two of my sisters or two of my nieces are not vaccinated. Please come here. A really good atmosphere. But of course, the, if you walk through those shelters and camps, this is my fifth visits a long-term visit in Gaza still you cannot get used to it the, the, the circumstances are incredibly uh, poor and last point I want to raise we also continue other our other work I mean WHO we we tried to get missions to the north over the last couple of weeks and from the eight missions we planned eight or nine missions we planned only three or four could go Yesterday, we had a mission to come out at one Indonesian hospital and we we brought an emerging medical team in 
to Indonesian hospital and we got one out. Uh, we also got somebody in the emergency medical team in Kamala Guan, and also uh, Godet's uh, emerged uh, medical team out, which is important, which are providing teams specializing in neurosurgery, plastic surgery, etc. We offloaded a truck full with medical supplies uh, and fuel. And we brought uh, referral, we, we actually, what we call internal medevac of an amputee patient with below the knee and above elbow and amputations uh, and his father and uh, mother and some children from Indonesia to the IMC field hospital. We supplied chemotherapy medications to Kamal at one. Um, and if I thought that this mission was delayed for hours, but coming back, was even worse. So we finalized uh, our meetings and everything on the polio yesterday night at 11. This mission was still not back for the day before. They only came back one, one thirty, uh, one thirty in the morning, which is completely irresponsible. And it, it still shows that we still struggle after these 11 months with, with a workable deconfliction system. Incredibly serious. These hospitals they need fuel, they need the medical supplies, etc. And we should be able to do better. Small positive <laughs> points. Yesterday, Shiva, the Ministry of uh, Health actually inag inaugurated a new emergency department in the Shiva Medical Complex. Uh, 70 bed capacities, triage, etc. WHO supported the emergency department with medical supplies, ICU beds, etc. We also assisted with a hemodialysis here in, in this region with uh, 26 actually, hemodialysis beds in MSF and the Ministry of Health Hospital. Uh, so that is some small, I would say, signs of a really strong resilience. Over Thank to you. you. Thank you very much, Enrique. There are quite a few questions. Before I start uh, giving the floor, I just would like to remind the journalists that yesterday we have distributed a statement by the UN Special Coordinator for the Middle East Peace Process to Venezuela on the situation in the Gaza Strip. He was coming back from the Gaza Strip, where he witnessed firsthand the catastrophic impact of the hostilities. You have the full um, statement in your mailboxes, where he really says he continued to be engaged with all stakeholders towards the objectives of, fine, of uh, getting to an immediate humanitarian ceasefire and urge all sides to reach an agreement that will bring about an immediate release of all hostages and a humanitarian ceasefire. I'll start now with Christian. Um, I think not, he, Rick doesn't know you all, so I just introduce you. Uh, Christian uh, Rick, our uh, representative of uh, the German uh, news agency. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. I have two clarification questions on figures and one substantial real question. How do you know you reach 90% if you don't know the exact number of children in that area and how many children are targeted in the southern area? So those are the two figure questions. And then my question is, I guess that most of the children in the Gaza Strip were up to date with their polio vaccination because until October last year, uh, as you said, vaccinations were taken up uh, um, regularly and happily. Why do all of them have to be vaccinated now if the vast majority must have had protection against polio already? Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Um, just uh, give the floor to Rick uh, to, for a brief answer. I just wanted to remind you that James Elder is also um, on the line. And as you know, UNICEF is doing the vaccination with WHO. And also, I am seeing in the chat, uh, Rick, and turning also to Christian, if it's possible to have your notes, the notes of your uh, briefing with the, num with the figures um, distributed to the press. Rick. Yeah, to start with your last question, thanks very much. So, so we're talking here about a, a vaccine-derived polio virus type 2, which this child uh, was infected with. And, and yes, Gaza children, they were pretty well vaccinated 11, um, more than 11 months ago. We I said over the last couple of years, we've seen figures of 95%, 90%, it was a little down to 89, but still uh, very good. We talk about the vaccine-derived poliovirus type 2. And this is why we have to uh, provide this this type of vaccine, this novel poliovirus uh, vaccine-derived uh, virus type 2. And uh, just to say as well, when these samples, these environmental samples uh, were uh, confirmed positive, 
for this vaccine-derived uh, poliovirus type. So WHO and, and help assist the ministry to improve the surveillance. That's why you do this surveillance on acute fl flaccid paralysis uh, and the three suspected cases uh, were discovered. Now, one of those children was indeed affected by this vaccine-derived poliovirus type 2. And that was an 11 months uh, old boy, uh, which was not vaccinated. And of course, we have seen this in, um, in, in Gaza. So strong vaccination for the crisis, but with, we've seen a health sector and a health service has been disintegrating over the last 11 months. I, I just raised with you the figures on, on the health functionality. This is not just hospitals and primary health care centers. It's also public health programs. So a routine immunization, which was a very strong um, operation, initially collapsed, completely collapsed with all the movements and, and health infrastructure, etc. Normally, Parents, they go for the routine immunization to their primary healthcare center. And many primary healthcare centers are not existing anymore, are not working, or people cannot access them. And including, of course, the ministry and partners need to guess uh, this, this, this routine immunization going again. That also applied for the, for the surveillance and, and many other, I would say, public health uh, uh, programs. Uh, now, your other question on, on the population. So, did you get your population right or wrong? I think it's a very good question. I think we, 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 we definitely think that we have the overall population of 640,000 more or less there, correct. The problem, of course, is there's been an enormous amount of populations movements all over Gaza and specifically in the south. Uh, we were even surprised, for example, that this this population, they were a small group and they were a little bit out of this zone, etc. And we expected much less children there and there were more. We expected 2,000 in one area. And yesterday they already vaccinated 4,000 children. Now, the, I told you there's been many uh, evacuation orders, specifically in the in the central area. So. Uh, from Khan Yunus, uh, from the south, from Awasi, to other places, etc. So, maybe based on that, we probably underestimated this uh, the group, popul the population then in the central zone. Uh, we will constantly try to adapt and assess that. For the moment, the southern target uh, is three because you asked about the 340,000 uh, children, and for the north, 150. So we had. I will repeat that for central zone, we have 156,583. We know that's an underestimation. We already know that. From the south, we have 340,000. For the north, 150,000. I also want to stress, why is this so complex? And having worked in many of these polio campaigns in other countries, in very complex countries like Afghanistan, for example, uh, a good polio campaign, you do, most of it, you do house to house. And you make an assessment per block, how many houses, families, how many children, etc. Then there's some fixed sites and it needed there's some mobile team. But house to house, delivery of polio uh, drops is the best way to do that. We cannot do that in Gaza. There's one way there's very few houses left and people are everywhere. So maybe the good thing is that Gazans, because they never had this kind of polio campaigns, uh, uh, 25 years there was no polio here so they never had this kind of polio campaign for a long time people are used to go to the fixed sites and we have seen it has worked very well in the first couple of days thank I you i hope i was clear to you thank you uh see there are many more questions um uh, isabel sacco spanish news agency uh, good morning i i would like to to know if you can tell us if um, the vaccination campaign is going on as you expected, especially in terms of security, if, if there has been any situation of risk for the workers or for the families going to the, to the places of vaccination. And uh, in this sense, if both parties are respecting strictly the humanitarian process. Thank you. Rick? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, until now, things are going well. Again, this is only the third day. So 
uh, this 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 area specific humanitarian pauses until now they work we of course expect that this will continue and that all parties etc will contribute to this and to make sure that we can continue we still have 10 days to go at least at least 10 days to go but currently yes and and i think uh, that also we know that in the in well in the area where we work now in the streets etc and that that was the reason specifically the first two days i mean like this is the third day that that parents and 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 their children were out by the droves and and i think felt very uh yeah i think secure in a way to do that so it's absolutely critical that we stick to that i think this is the complexity this is wildly complex and it is an, 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 to have a campaign in gaza and there's many other places where we did this also with fighting parties etc but i think it's even more complex here so all these pieces of the puzzles this this humanitarian specific pauses area specific pauses but of course all the teams all the mobile teams the making sure that everything uh, is linked the call chain uh, etc that people start on time from six the campaigns are from six till two that the mobile teams can go out that can go out that the, that the monitors can do the work so after i mean just for information after two three from four o'clock the core teams come back to the WHO and to the Polio Emergency Operations Center here right under me. And then all the analysis are done. And every every day between four and seven, et cetera, the, uh, based on the analysis, you know, with all the teams and partners, the campaign is adapted for the next day. Micro plans are adapted, et cetera. Micro plans are updated, lessons learned for the southern zone, et cetera, how to move forward. Uh, and then, yeah, this meeting sort of go on till nine, ten o'clock in the, in the evening. Thank you. Um, Reuters, Seven Farge. Hi, good morning, Rick. Um, I wanted to ask just a clarification, first of all. The, it looks on a map like they were partial zones, the north, central and south. Could you just clarify, or is it the whole of the strip? Uh, second question, it seems like quite quite a unique opportunity to see all of Gaza's children. Are you also using this opportunity to maybe screen them for other things like malnutrition and what are you seeing? And finally, uh, just on the backstory, given the difficulties you described uh, with deconfliction, why has, in your opinion, Israel agreed to this and why have there not been complications with this campaign whereas there have been for other th things that you've requested such as access to the north and so on could you give us any context on how israel was convinced to get on board with this was there donor pressure were there high level meetings any uh information or insights you could give into that process thank you yeah I, I didn't completely get the first part of your question. You asked how did we get to this um, The first this part was zones? just, is the whole of the Gaza Strip covered or are the three zones partial zones uh, and some areas of the Strip not covered by, by the pauses? Thank you. I think most of Gaza is covered, but not all. I think it's a good point. So for example, in the central zone, we identified a few areas small population areas, but significant, specifically when you you target this to at least vaccinate 90% plus, um, which we do, uh, which we make special movements uh, for, which yesterday worked well, and we hope that today it works well as well. Your second point is, you know, could we do other things with that and, and, and assessments as such, but we discussed this uh, a lot. Uh, the issue with the polio campaign is that when you want to reach 90% plus, that you, it's a very intense campaign. You, have, you want to do it as quickly as possible, over at least number of days as possible. And the complexity is now in Gaza. We, that's we, that's not me, eh? that's a technical team. Uh, I'm a bit of a polio expert, there's many more job experts, and we sit together with all of them. And so we decided, in this campaign, we cannot add anything. This is absolutely the max. We want to reach 90% of the kid, uh, uh, coverage. We have a, a limited, uh, limited number of days, and we have a limited number of times. So, of course, I just want to stress: this was all based 
on negotiations and negotiations way forward. Is this ideal? No, this is not ideal. However, and I told you already, you prefer to go house to house, which is not possible. That's why you need to do difference, etc. But we all agree this is a workable, it's a feasible option. And we want to stop this transmission, so we go for it. And this area specific humanitarian policies are absolutely the most critical part of that. So, I mean, with all the other pieces of the puzzles. So that's why we move forward. Now, we will learn lessons from this first uh, round uh, everywhere. And if we see that uh, more things are, well, more activities would be possible in the second round, four weeks from now, we will definitely do that. We are already analyzing and thinking that what I even, of course, would hope that if this is possible, you know, and, and again, we only the third day. I have a bit of hope, a bit of hope, but it's only the third uh, day. But if, if this is possible, this kind of complex polio campaign in the, this incredibly challenging circumstances, then we have to really think more is possible in Gaza and how can we build up that. We definitely will learn the lessons for, uh, for that. Now, why have, have parties agreed to this? I think there's a couple of reasons what I can think of. First, I mean, polio is a very easily preventable disease. We, the, the world, everyone would like to stop transmission. You don't want to see uh, children with polio and suffering from polio. You also want to stop the transmission first and foremost in Gaza, but you also want to stop the international spread where it could maybe harm and affect children outside uh, Gaza. The Globally, the polio is, as, as you all know, is a public health event of international concern related to the international health regulations. And it is already for many years, and currently MPOX in the past COVID was that. But it's very special, and there's a reason for that. Something like the world is, is, is busy on an eradication track uh, track or for polio since 1988. There's only two countries where there's wild polio virus. We know that Afghanistan, Pakistan. Uh, there's a number of places where you see this outbreaks of the so-called vaccine-derived polio virus. That's always in areas where there's war, civil strife, something like that, where you have groups of children who are unvaccinated or undervaccinated and who are vulnerable. And then this happens. So I think all of this together i think uh, maybe that's that the world and the parties are more open to that i wish and i fully agree with you uh, that this should be also applicable to many other yeah. humanitarian operations and that's why i meant i, I actually i mentioned as well in my introduction mm -hmm. the struggle we we still have to do what i would call what I, what should be by now routine humanitarian operations to the north to those hospitals etc Thank you, very, you. thank you very much. I think, yeah, there was one last question from the French news agency AFP, uh, Nina Larson, and then we'll go to uh, OHCHR. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks for taking my questions. I just wanted to follow up. Um, First of all, I was wondering if um, you're expecting any different or more complicated challenges in the southern and northern zones uh, when you go in there for, for uh, doing the vaccination there, um, if you think it'll be different. Um, and then I just wanted to clarify on the, on the vaccine um, that you mentioned to Christian's question. Um, so this is a different vaccine than what the children had before, is that correct, for the vaccine-derived polio virus, just so that I'm clear on that? Um, and one last question, which would be um, if, if you're hoping or expecting that, um, that the success of this, of this uh, rollout this time will perhaps lead to, to better humanitarian cooperation uh, on, other, on other issues. Thank you. Uh, Rick, if you don't yeah. want to give brief answers, because yeah. now that I said it was the last one, of course, I have two, two more hands, but I, we really need to go to the next subject. So please, if you can answer shortly, thank you. Okay, so a oh, very good question. So first of all, yes, of course, we, we definitely expect uh, other challenges. Um, every day is different. There's always hurdles, etc. The, the southern zone is a larger area. 
And we also know that there's some kids, a larger group of, of, of population outside that zone, which we have to reach. So we are we are discussing and negotiating on that. But it's also a larger area and we are with the same 513 teams, etc. So we difficult. Also the north, population more spread out, etc. There will be also difficult, uh, different challenges. On this virus, it's an it's a novel oral polio vaccine, NOPV. Two, and it's a polio vaccine was being used to stop the transmission of this variant polio virus type 2, this so called CVDPV2. Currently, the most prevalent form of the variant polio for, uh, virus. I just want to say it's an absolutely safe and effective offers protections against paralysis and it's been globally recommended for the variant type 2. Uh, and this type was found in the recent samples from Gaza. Uh, and since the rollout of this NOPV type, Again, in March 2021, more than 1.2 billion doses of this vaccine have been used to protect children of 40 countries uh, all over uh, against this type 2 variant polio virus. Your last points. Uh, do I think this will have an impact on other humanitarian uh, activities? I would hope so. I think it should. And I think that, that all parties, conflict, but also member states, we should really push for that. If this is possible, in a, in, in a way, we should do much better in what I call the routine, what should be by now a routine humanitarian operation, because we have massive challenges, as I described, in health, but also in the whole wash area, the water and sanitation area, the food security, and specifically shelter. So much more is needed. So I would expect that this will maybe, it will maybe give another spirit and a different approach. So yes. Thank you very much. Uh, brief, please, Jamie. Um, Associated Press. Thank you, um, uh, Dr. Peppercorn. This is Peppercorn. This is Jamie Keaton from Associated Press. Um, just to make sure I'm getting your ma my maths correct, you essentially said over 161,000 uh, kids have been vaccinated in the first two days. The total is your total go goal is 640,000. So that basically comes to more than a quarter of all kids that you want to reach. I just want to make sure that's correct. And then the second uh, thing is I'd just like to follow up on Emma's uh, question um, about Israel's motivations here because um, you talked sort of in general terms about the desire to avoid international spread and the how polio should be not be affecting any kids these days but can you just give us some insight into what actually tipped the balance for israel specifically in terms of allowing this to go through um given all the other complexities um in gaza thank you yeah, the first question, yeah, yeah, that's uh, correct, uh, correct. So 640,000 uh, children in, 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 in total. And, and, and yeah, we, we, we reach now the total of 161,030 uh, children. Uh, again, so probably the, we underestimated the, the, the population in the, what we call the central zone, zone, and maybe we overestimate a little in the southern zone, which is more, but we will, we will see and then go to the, to the north. So that's correct. Yeah, I find it difficult. Your second point, you know, like uh, why and, and, and how, etc. The, for me, I think maybe the reason is that, first of all, we talk about polio. And, and yes, it is, um, we talk about this, this global program, the world's on its track to eradication. And then suddenly you get polio in such an area. And the risk of polio within Gaza, uh, but also the risk on international spreads. I think that definitely, that definitely helps. It's a factor. And, and, and maybe it's because we talk about children. I don't know. I don't even want to go there. Uh, I would not hope so. I would hope that uh, this is something that that the parties rally around, like, hey, this is important and this can be done. But again, uh, we are not here just for polio. We focus now on polio, but specifically at the WHO, show, we're looking at the whole, the broader, broader health sector. And I described to you the, the enormous needs and, and, and and enormous needs also, and, and what I still don't understand why some basic humanitarian operations and having been in a five, six time, a long time, time, having been on many of these missions, why this is still not uh, 
uh, working properly. Why still we still have a problem with, with getting the rights, the amount of goods in and in a regular way why they're in Gaza, but also then getting these goods within Gaza, all over Gaza. And it is not only applicable, of course, for, for health, very much for all the other areas I mentioned, the wash, the, 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 the shelter, um, but all, still areas of fuel, the, the problems we have with cash, the problems we have to, to work properly as humanitarian agencies, etc. And we don't even talk about the human recovery. So, I think a lot uh, needs to be changed and done. And, and yeah, the final, I think if that's then I think we sound like a broken record. I think to to make a real movement, a real progress on, on all of that, you need, of course, to ceasefire and you need to, to have a start in, in, in proper peace process and moving forward that we can do this also in a different way. In the yeah. meantime, I think a lot can happen to improve humanitarian operations overall. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Uh, Lisa, really one minute, please. I, I, I really need to go ahead with the other briefings just very quickly. Uh, yeah, yeah, Alessandra, not guilty. Okay, I have two questions, one for Rick and one for James Elder. UNICEF, who is also a participant, that is the organization in this process. So I'll quickly ask my questions. Um, for you first, Rick, um, are you concerned that there, you had mentioned there were three suspected cases of polio and one child who actually had polio. Are you concerned that there may be many more undetected cases of polio? And if that's the case, does this create uh, more problems for, for you and for the future of uh, this disease in the West, I'm sorry, in, in Gaza. And James, if you can hear me, please, good morning to you. Uh, I, I'd like essentially to get your impressions, your perspective about how the campaign has been going and uh, what, what concerns you may have that have so far uh, gone unrecognized or undealt with. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Yeah, so uh, yeah, thanks for it. But yeah, we are of course concerned and that's why we also have um, um, together with Ministry of Health and Parents, WSO is, is, is strengthening the surveillance uh, uh, surveillance system and we have to go all out of that. And sometimes you hear stories now, oh, you know, there are some suspected cases of acute flaccid paralysis that can also be, of course, uh, caused by others, others, other diseases and other causes than polio. But of course, we need to follow up and check. I mean, unfortunately, the 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 environment, and I described that already, the incredibly poor water and sanitation, it's a lot of oral fecal transmission, massive amount of viral diseases. It's breeding grounds for all those diseases, including polio. So that's one. Secondly, I still want to mention that, I mean, because we go out all the time. And and I said that from the beginning, this is in partnership. This is the Ministry of Health, WHO, UNICEF and RAN. But I also want to say is many, many NGOs, uh, many NGOs, the international NGOs and national NGOs. And of course, most credits should go to the 2,200 health workers and community workers. So go out every every day. The spirit is very high. And I want to again say, Gaza always had a, a very good vaccine acceptance uh, uh, rate. But the parents know in Gaza, also in the West Bank, why they want to send their kids for vaccination. So, so people are very open. And even now, it's difficult to explain. It will be difficult to explain. And that will be a problem why there's a second round needed, etc., and that people will have to continue with their routine immunization. So together with UNICEF and, and partners in the ministry, we're looking already also now how to strengthen routine immunization. And the last quarter, uh, we got almost 80, 90% coverage from routine immunization. We have to update our specifically and, and do a better analysis on the denominator, but all of that has to be ongoing. And of course, finally, we have to start uh, improving primary health care and all the other components. I didn't even discuss mental health and psychosocial supports for all, especially children and special needs uh, uh, groups, but actually for all Gazans. Over to you. Uh, 